Since my videos keep getting taken down when I call out my own people, let's try this shit again. To my Latinos, particularly my Mexican people, when you push your internal light onto people who are darker than us, you are doing the work of the colonizer. Just because you're a lighter shade of brown doesn't give you any favor with the palm colored people. They will smile in your face while you clean and build their homes, landscape their yards, watch their children, and work in their fields. Land that they stole from us, by the way. And then behind your backs, they turn around and say that you're lazy, just want handouts, contribute to poverty. They call you drug dealers and murderers. They complain that you're stealing their jobs, yet these are the jobs that they don't want to do themselves. They make you work 20 times as hard to earn the same shit that they got for working 20 times less as hard. They pay you shitty wages, make you work in subpar working conditions, and don't give you any kind of health benefits. If you think you're gaining favor with them by pushing your internalized race onto our Afro-Mexicans, our Afro-Indigenous, our Afro-Latinos, and our Black Americans, you are sadly mistaken. They don't care about you and they never will. So stop trying to kiss their asses as if they are. They give you just enough so that way you can destroy your own people while they sit in the corner laughing, knowing that you are doing the hard work for them while they reap all the fucking benefits and you get very little in return. You are being used and exploited and they will never see you more than just another brown person. Remember that when you think you're superior to somebody who is darker than you. So she was talking to her community, good for her. But the thing is, would her community actually listen to her? I personally would not hold my breath for the singular reason that colonization and slavery greatly affected the mindset of non-white people to the point where the internalized rate to the system and self-hatred that some non-white people have is astronomical. And some of them don't even realize that they are walking around, navigating this world, making decisions that are all based on the internalized rate to the system and self-hatred that they have. The reason why I brought this video on here is because, of course, I wanted to get the word out right but there is also the fact that there were points in her video where we could literally remove latina or latino and fix other non-white communities in there and the points she made still applies to those communities the black african community included because you see some of our people kissing up to white people as well forgetting where they came from cooning away and tap dancing for their pleasure so they can get crumbs acting like these people would ever fully pick them or they would ever become white from doing what they are doing and they too need this kind of reminder i personally do not believe in poc solidarity because there is no poc solidarity we don't see non-black pocs solidifying with black people like it's literally us against the world but it's very unfortunate when you think about it on a deeper level because what exactly are pocs and black people dragging with each other like we are literally not our enemies we could change the world if we choose to come together and work together but because non-black pocs have this thing called proximity to whiteness they decide to go to the white side but anyways if that's how they want to go and roll i wish them all the best in their endeavors me as i did here so i really do not have the time to care about who wants to or doesn't want to solidify with us i just want to solidify with my people period we have each to get done for us and ours i want to make it perfectly clear when i said that the palm colored people will see you as brown i wasn't just talking about the people who build homes and landscape and take care of kids or work in the fields i was also talking about all of y'all who work in offices who are teachers who work in healthcare, who are first responders, who are in the military, who own small businesses and are CEOs, and who are also politicians. Because some of y'all be the worst. They don't look at you like you earned that sh They think you got it as a handout. And the moment you piss them off, they are quick to tell you to go back to where the fuck you came from. Because no matter how much they want to make you legally white to boost their numbers. You will still always be brown in their eyes. And they will always treat you as such. Remember that shit when you vote in November. 
and you think about voting for that red party because all you're going to do is vote against your own interests and the interests of your own people. You will never be white. No matter how hard you try, they won't allow it. They will continue to use you and exploit you. Again, everything she's saying right now applies even to our own community. And this is why I really want to share this video. I just wish the cones out there would actually listen. Because these folks are only using you. They don't care about you the way they would discard of you after they are done with you. <laughs> hey! They would use you to destroy your own people in front of you. They'll be cheering you on and clapping for you. But behind closed doors, they are laughing at you. And after they are done exploiting you, just like trash, they put you in the bin. When did I find out that I really wasn't considered to be white? Story time. For those of you who do not know me, I was born and raised in the island of Puerto Rico. The reason I have an accent is because English is my second language. In Puerto Rico, we learned some English in school, but not enough to be conversational. So it was under that context back in 1989 that I decided then to join the United States Army when I was only 18 years old. Given then my lack of skills in the English language, the army sent me to a nine weeks English school before I could start basic training. Although those nine weeks helped me with the basics of the English language, they really weren't enough to keep me from sometimes struggling during my training. Thankfully, I had a Puerto Rican friend who was from New York and bilingual and could help me to survive it. After graduating from basic training and advanced individual training, I also attended urban school where I basically learned how to safely jump out of airplanes. After that, I ended up landing in my first duty station, which was the 82nd Urban Division at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. During my first year there, as I was still learning and struggling with the English language, some of my fellow paratroopers sometimes would treat me like I was some kind of idiot who didn't know what was going on. Deep inside, that shit used to piss me off. Most of these fellow paratroopers happened then to share my same skin color, which was then that I began to learn about some of the realities about this country that I wasn't yet fully aware of. So after being in my unit for almost a year, we all then got called to go to the Persian Gulf to be part of the Gulf War in 1990-91. Since we were the 82nd Urban Division, we were literally the very first one who arrived to Saudi Arabia to get ready to potentially fight the Iraqis. They put us then in the middle of the desert and had to build our own mini tent city. Well, the leadership at the time didn't take charge of our living arrangements and basically allowed everyone to pick their own tents. Interesting enough, we all ended up divided by race groups, the white tents and then the everyone else's tents. Guess which tent I ended up in? You guessed it, right? Even if I wanted to be in the white tent, I knew then that I wouldn't be welcome. Anyhow. With such segregation, it wasn't long before we all ended up fighting one another. That's when the leadership realized they fucked up and only then ended up rearranging our living spaces. Ever since then, I understood which tent I belonged to. For years, I tried to get in their tent until I realized that I could build my own and be much better than theirs. In fact, that experience helped me to become the leader that I ended up becoming later on in the future. Stay woke, people. Bye. It is sad that he had to experience that, go through that experience to find out who he was and who he wasn't. But after coming to that realization, he then saw the world for what the world is. So moving forward, he acts and moves accordingly. And this is the realization we need the coons to come to. They would never pick you. Hoy en día tenemos aquí en los Estados Unidos a tres diferentes clases de hispanos trompeteros. Los primeros son los come mierdas. Estos son los que se creen que el dinero los hacen blancos. Los segundos son los aleluyas. Estos son los que se creen que su religión los convierte en blancos. Y los terceros son los ignorantes. Estos son los que piensan sin evidencia histórica ninguna que siempre han sido blancos. Si eres hispano y perteneces a uno de estos tres grupos, o de hecho perteneces combinadamente a más de uno de ellos, felicitaciones. Tú has sido oficialmente trompetizado en el nombre del blanquismo supremo. ¡Despierte, mi gente! Dale.